Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about the properties of addition and multiplication. Let's get started. All right, well, today's lesson is all about equivalent expressions. Well, first, let's talk about what exactly are equivalent expressions. If you think about, you might already know equivalent fractions, right? You know that one half and two fourths are equivalent fractions because they have the exact same value. That's exactly the same with equivalent expressions. Equivalent expressions are expressions that have the same value, okay? Expressions that have the same value. They might look a little bit different. The order might be different, but the value is the same. Now let's get into the two types of properties we're going to talk about today. The first property we're going to talk about is the commutative property. Now, when you look at that word, you might think commute. And if you ask your parents about the word commute, they would probably think about commuting to work. So they would go from their house to work, and then when they're done with work, they go from work back to their house. Now, the distance would always be the same. It's not going to change whether I go from the house to work or work from the house. I could change the order, but the distance is still going to be the same. That's the same thing with the commutative property. The order does not, I'm going to put that big capital letters, does not change the value. The other thing is that it only works with two types of operation, or addition and multiplication. So make sure you have that written down. So for the commutative property of addition, we could have something like 3 plus 2. Well, that expression is equivalent, right? It has the same value as 2 plus 3, okay? We change the order, but the value does not change. 3 plus 2 is 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. The value is still the same. It works for addition. It can also work for multiplication. 4 times 5 is equivalent to 5 times 4. They both have the same value. For commutative property, the order does not change the value. Order does not matter. And it only works for addition and multiplication, right? If I try to do subtraction, 3 minus 2 is not equal to 2 minus 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So that doesn't work. And same thing with division. 10 divided by 2 is not the same as 2 divided by 10. They don't have the same value. They are not equivalent. Let's check out the associative property. All right, let's talk about the second property, the associative property. Well, just like we did with commutative property, we talked about the word commute. Associative property, let's talk about the word associate. Associate just means what do you identify with? If I want to give myself as, as an example, uh, I like to play soccer. So I associate myself with soccer players or with my team. Uh, I also like to snowboard in the winter. So in the winter, I might associate myself with other snowboarders. Depending on what group I'm in, it doesn't change who I am. I'm still myself. I haven't changed. But the grouping has changed. Okay. So the associative property is changing the grouping. So whenever you think of associative property, think of groups, right? Do I kind of associate myself with the soccer group or the snowboarding group, right? Changing the grouping 
does not, again, big capital letters, does not change the value. Okay? And this is just like the commutative property. We only use this with addition. Addition and multiplication. If I had 3 plus 4 plus 7, well, right now we're grouping 4 plus 7 together. But because this is all addition we're only adding here, that would be equivalent to 3 plus 4 plus 7. I could decide to group the 3 plus the 4 together, okay, instead of the 4 plus the 7. Okay? Those are equivalent expressions. Right here, we just demonstrated the associated property of addition. Same thing with multiplication. 3 times uh, 10 times 5, okay, that's equivalent to 3 times 10 times 5. And I'll put the 5 out front, okay? Those are equivalent expressions as well because this is all being multiplied together. So changing the grouping is not going to change the value. 10 times 5 is 50 times 5, sorry, times 3 is 150. 3 times 10 is 30 times 5 is 150. The value is the same. They are equivalent expressions. Let's get into some examples. All right, here we go with example one. Simplify the expression and explain each step. So A, we've got seven plus, in parentheses, 12 plus X. Um, well, I can't add 12 plus X because X is a variable. I don't know what it actually is. I don't know the value of it. But I could do seven plus 12. And if I notice, we're only using addition. So in that case, instead of having these grouped together, I could change the grouping to this. 7 plus 12, and then plus x. Okay. Well, we're simplifying. Let's explain this step. What step did we just use? We changed. We didn't change any of the order, 7, 12, x. The order didn't change, so it's not commutative property. The grouping changed, right? So that's associative property, and if you think this is addition, so it's associative property of addition. I'm just going to write APA, -A, associative property of addition, okay? Now let's simplify. Well, 7 plus 12 is 19 plus X. So now that is simplified. Let's go to the next one. 6.1 plus X plus 8.4. It's all addition, so I know I'm going to be using one of the properties of addition. Um, but I want to do 8.4 plus 6.1. Well, first I should change the order so I can group them together after that. So let's change the order. So let's make this x plus 6.1 and then plus 8.4. So all I did was change the order. So we know that that one was commutative property. Commutative property was changing the order, and you keep the same value. So commutative property of addition, I'm just going to say commutative property addition, CPA, like a certified public accountant. Uh, now, we still have another step to do. We still haven't simplified yet. Again, like I said before, I want to group these together. So let's change the grouping. Let's go X plus 6.1 plus 8.4. We're grouping those two decimals together. Change the grouping. That's associative property of addition. Remember, explaining your steps as you go. And now we can just add those together. So I get x plus, uh, what is that, 14.5? 14.5. There's my simplified expression. Okay? Let's go to the next one. C. 5 times, in parentheses, 11y. Now remember, if you have a number next to parentheses, that means multiplication. If you have a number next to a variable, that also means multiplication. And we call that a coefficient. Remember, coefficient, that means we're multiplying it by that variable. 
Multiplication, multiplication. We're only multiplying here. So that allows us to do either the commutative property or associative property or both. So I'm going to have 5 times 11 and then times y. Okay, because I can do 5 times 11. So all I did was change the grouping. That's associative property of, this time, multiplication. Now, 5 times 11, that's simple. 55 times y, so 55y. Last one. x plus 5 eighths in parentheses plus 1 fourth at the end. Again, I want to change the grouping. Uh, here, the order is fine. I can keep that order and just change the grouping. So I'll go x plus, in parentheses, 5 eighths plus 1 fourth. I just changed the grouping. That's associative property of addition. Okay. And now let's add. Well, 5 eighths plus 1 fourth, I need a common denominator. So that's going to become 8, and that's going to become a 2. So 2 eighths instead of 1 fourth, so I can add those. X plus 5 eighths plus 2 eighths is 7 eighths. Here's some to try on your own. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.